So that's medieval. That, I gave you that example. I don't usually like to give that example because it is it's a dangerous example to give it. I'm honest about it. I'm not solely Islam. Uh, too much of a person. That's, I don't like Paul. I think Paul is a dishonest, scheming, egomaniac uh, promoter. And uh, I would never give the word saint to him in any shape, way, or form. Uh, and I don't mean to hurt any Christian's feelings because I actually support some of uh, Christian history too. It doesn't matter what, I'm just giving you my own personal way of dealing with these things and how people react to that. People who haven't looked at these things, oh, you can't say anything bad about Paul, he's our saint. <laughs> you haven't looked at Paul. It's because of Paul that you're burning people. <laughs> it's he, he says in Galatians, anyone who teaches a, do a gospel different from my own, he is to be accursed. It says right at the beginning of, of, of the way. So he repeats it. He says, oh, you think I'm, I'm um, too accommodating to the opinions of mankind? Oh, I repeat myself. Anyone who teaches a gospel different from my own, he is to be accursed. To the letter of the Galatians. Repeats it twice. Well, on that basis, People like Eusebius, three, four hundred years later, went to work cursing people who preached the gospel different from the one that they were promoting. We're getting that in these in these materials here. So you see, what we're talking about is what we spoke about last time. The initial feeling about um, when someone says something you don't like is hostility. I don't like him. He's hurting me. I've been taught this. He's undermining it, or she's undermining it. I really don't like that person. But after about three months of that person, you might come to like that person, funnily enough. Your initial feeling is negativity. And I find that in my classes constantly. I find students don't really warm up to me, and they usually do, don't they, Noel? About halfway, two-thirds of the way through, when they learn that I'm being honest with them, and show them each thing that what we're speaking about is based on, and let them draw their own conclusions if they think that is a nice thing or not a nice thing. Like when Muhammad in the Quran says, don't come into my presence without announcing yourself. Uh, when you speak to me, speak from behind a veil, it would be better for you. After I die, don't have, you cannot have any of my women. That would be a monstrosity. Uh, I can marry ten women, you can only marry four. Things like that. I mean, this is like the, the words of a megalomaniac. Not uh, a gentle person anyway. Uh, but the believer doesn't read, the, doesn't take those passages in seriously. So if I come to a passage like that and I show them, or we come to Paul, what Paul says, um, um, I'm a Greek to the Greek, a Jew to the Jew, a law keeper to the law keeper, a law breaker to the law breaker. I will do whatever I have to do to win. Well, we know what that is. We've heard that in pro football. Win, baby, win. That's uh, the Oakland Raider ethic. That's also the coach of the Green Bay Packers in the old days. When, yeah, when he said uh, winning isn't, <laughs> how he put it, winning isn't the only thing, it's everything. I forget how he put it. You know, something like that. But we know that's the Western. That's epic. You win. You play to win, you know, whatever. Then he said, all the fighters at the stadium, using the imagery of stadium athletics, which he knew in Palestine was a war, because the Jews and the all peoples didn't like the Olympics, didn't like gymnasiums, because people oiled their bodies and went naked in them. And it was considered irreligious to be involved with things. So he then purposely uses the imagery to upset them of stadium athletics. He says, all of the runners at the stadium are running for a prize. And, but I run for a prize, their prize withers. I run for a prize that will never wither, then using stadium boxing. That's how I fight, like the boxers, not beating the air. So he tells you his agenda. What is his agenda? Winning. And you know he'll have to do whatever he has to do to win, and he does. And by the way, Paul does win. Paul has won. We are products of Pauline um, theology, thinking, and uh, the mindset. 
And uh, so if I uh, oppose it in some degree in my classes, because I don't think it's a legitimate way to deal with truth, and it's not something that I personally would admire, an approach that I personally would admire, I'm not into the power, <laughs> to the power uh, uh, urge of controlling, uh, of winning, and, uh, um, I'll show you the passages on, on it, uh, that it's based on. So someone like James, who is Paul's really inveterate opponent, and someone Paul is always criticizing by implication in his letters, and we'll see that, is not up to dealing with Paul, because James is called the righteous one. He's perfectly righteous. He has no God. He doesn't do things to win. He doesn't, you know, plot the thing out so he's going to win and the other person's going to going to going to lose. Who's that person who's Bush campaign manager down there in Texas? The guy Carl Rove. He's not Carl Rove, you know. He's just out there for righteousness, good or bad. And when we see him, we find that that's exactly the way he is. And that's what the Dead Sea Scrolls, to a certain extent, are. And guess what? That's why they all lose. That's why they all lose, because they're dealing with much more diabolical people than they are. So, these are the things that I think, since we have all this data at our disposal in the 20th century, we can begin to work on. Uh, but to do so, to do so, we have to, we have to be willing to open our minds, as I told you last time, and let these things in. So, we have to take the pseudo-clementines and throw the word pseudo away. We have to just take them as equal documents to anything else. There are no pseudo-documents. There are just documents. Uh, no documents are canonical. No documents are apocryphal. One document is not superior to another unless it's proven to be so by the content that it contains. All information all its sources, all input has to be treated equally until it has some characteristic that would disqualify it. Now that's how I would treat the material of the spirit. Whether it comes from a source like Islam, or a source uh, Christian Church Fathers, or a Jewish source, or uh, Josephus, or the Dead Sea Scrolls, all these have to be treated equally. Now I have said in my introductory statements that there are materials, and I don't mean to be harsh, in the Gospels that to my mind undermine some of their credibility. That is the miracle stories, the exorcism material, those are favorite things and they're very appealing to uh, young people or people in church environments.